Hello everyone, how's it going? In this video, we're going to look into what is happening with Sensionics Holdings. Ticket symbol SENS. There are four topics that we're going to cover in this video. One, the FDA approval of the 180DA sensor. Two, there's an upcoming research presentation that's going to happen over the weekend. Yes, it's a short term play that can affect the price of the stock today and Monday. Third, we're going to look into Sensionics product line. What are the other products that Sensionics is working on? Yes, they do have some exciting other products. We're going to cover in that. Fourth and foremost, most important, we're going to cover Sensionics more from a consumer level, more from the diabetic community. What are the people in the diabetic community talking about Sensionics? Let's get started. First thing, Sensionics submitted the FDA approval for the 180 day sensor system on October and they were expecting the approval to come out in first quarter of 2020, but with the vaccines that came out for COVID-19, FDA has halted all their operations and used all their resources for the vaccine EUA or the emergency use authorization. So they're expecting that the FDA approval should be coming in sometime quarter two, and with the quarter two almost coming to an end, people are expecting it kind of somewhere right around the corner, but we never know. The second thing, the 81st scientific sessions this is on the american diabetes association this is going to happen tomorrow it's happening between june 25 to 2019 and if you look into the different planners and different presentations that are going to come up this is one of them evaluation of the next generation 180 day long-term implantable ever since cgm and this is the presentation this is the quick extract of whoever is going to be presenting this is satish Gard, and he's the same gentleman who also spoke about the face trials in the past so this is something which is going to upcoming on the 27th it's a webinar you can also register it i'll leave the links in the description for you to look into it if you are looking to deep dive and understand this more in detail now the other products that sensionics is currently working on so this is the product pipeline that they had originally given out and this is from november 2020 so they were currently working on the ever since 180 day this is the right product and then the next product in the pipeline is the ever since 365 cents. So there's a 365 days and this will be game changer. Freedom to system 24. This is another sensor that's altogether different. And this is something insulin using patients. So this is a completely different product altogether. Something very interesting to look into. Now, the question that I had arised is they have already a 90 day system already in the market and they're Con, uh, right now, the competitors for C the CGM or in the continuous glucose monitoring space are the Abbott Freestyle Liber and the Dexcom. The, I think this is this guy is bigger than the Abbott's Freestyle or more adopted than the Abbott Freestyle. So they already have a 90-day implantable CGM in the market, which is already approved by FDA, and it's going on. This was approved back in 2018. And they already have something which is better than Abbott because they both take only 17, 7 to 4 days, 14 days or 10 days, that's about it. And then you need to reshuffle the sensor. But why is that people, you don't hear much about Sensionics or the Eversense product. So if you look, go into Google, just simply search for continuous glucose monitoring devices on 2021, and you'll come across Dexcom, Biosense, Freestyle, this is the Abbott, again Dexcom. Dexcom seems to be the one which is coming up more often and more reviews and it looks like more adopted by other people. And if you look into the seven blessed or seven best great glucose monitors and try to look into those aspects, there are a few things that are coming up. Now, this is talking about some K-Touch blood glucose on the first and then Freestyle Libre, which is Abbott. Then you have the Dexcom and then you have Eversense. Now, this particular review is talking about where if you're looking for a continuous globalism that applied to the doctor's office instead of home, you may consider CGM. So they're talking good about it, but they're also talking about some challenges or issues that people were experiencing. And they're also talking about overall users appreciate how the sensor has changed over 90 days versus the 7 to 14 days. However, some have experienced sensitivity alerts when wearing the sensor in direct sunlight. And this is just a brief overview, but if you look into the in-depth review, this is a very good article where this gentleman has given out his whole, he's, he's basically given out, tried and tested the CGM and then gave his three-month trial run over here. I'll put in the link in the description and you can read it out. He's giving you a full detail of what he feels about the sensor. Now, there are a few pros and cons that he goes over and all of them are equally important for us to understand from an investor point of view, how the product is being adopted by the 
actual community, the actual people who are going to be using this. So the pros are, I suppose the main advantage offered by the efforts is, is that there is no need to change the sensor on a regular basis. Yes, that's the whole point of it, because it extends the lifetime. The accuracy of the sensor is quite good. The Everson cell phone app, I mean, there are all the other good all aspects are good. I'm not highlighting them because these are more, that was something which caught my attention more often. Now, in terms of the cons, person is talking about the sensor insertion procedure requires an office visit and healing time. It's not a painful experience, numbing agents are used, but it is inconvenient and leaves a small cut. So there is an added issue where you're going to be working with someone else who's going to help you in order to establish it. But I've seen videos and reviews, and I'll put in one of the YouTube links, where a person who has already tried and he was showing how he had how he installed it by himself. The second thing is keeping the transmitter working requires a daily ritual that takes about 10 minutes. Now, this is something which I've looked into where they are talking about where in regards to the calibration, yeah, there is twice calibration which needed, and you have to be, and you also need to charge the transmitter, which is the electronic device that needs to be sensing or in, transmitting the information between the phone and the sensor. Uh, the nose, there is no medical coverage. I think this is the one which is hurting the Eversense product the most. The no medical coverage, the insurance coverage, but Sensionics is, is working on this, but they still lack the universal coverage of the CGM. I did read somewhere that the um, uh, Medicare out in California was starting to approve this, but I, I didn't find the reliable resource for it, so I couldn't post it out here, but you can look into it and research on your own. Uh, now, th this is something which is important to look into. So these are the final score, and uh, he, he didn't feel it was you know, something to go on. And after, in, after three months, he did discontinue using the ever since. But this is a very good point he's going to express, and this is important because we're also going to look into the other reviews from other users who also posted on this forum. So he's talking about, as a first-generation medical device, I feel that ever since is head and shoulders better than anything that it preceded it. Unfortunately, other CGM systems, for example, the Dexcom and the Abbott that we saw earlier, are already on their fourth, fifth, and sixth generations, which means that they have already worked out most of the bugs and the shortcomings that plagued their first generation products. Now, if you recall, the 90-day approval, the 90-day CGM system came out back in 2018. So it didn't start rolling out until 2019. And right when they started to roll out and started to work on 2020, you saw the COVID. And then that also impacted a lot on the staffing purposes. And there were not many people who were ready to help. Uh, coming back to this. So this is an important point where he's talking about the other CGM systems who have already been reiterated and fixed many, many of their bugs and then their fourth, fifth, sixth generations, whereas the CGM with Eversense or the Sensionics, it's on its first generation. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, coming down here, let's look into all these other reviews. These are people who have actually been using, and these are very much live comments that are coming through. This is from June 18th, very recently. And this gentleman is talking about where the glucose readings were almost never accurate. But if you look into this review, the person had already because every, every review, you need to understand where the person is also coming from and how, how much of it is, you know, biased with regards to emotions, bias with regards to the actual working of the sensor. So this person is talking about uh, how he was upset because he had to replace the cell. Uh, he didn't know that it could be reusable, so he threw it off and then later on then realized that it was reusable, so he was upset about throwing it off. But that creeped into this thing where he's talking about the glucose readings were almost never as accurate as the Dexcom readings were and two finger sticks per day. Dexcom had none. Recharging the transmitter for 10 minutes every day. Forget traveling and off schedule days. They just don't work into the plan of care. So this is from one person. But this person is talking about how the accurate the accuracy was better. So I do like the fact I have more accurate readings than my Dexcom. But he's also talking about the other issue that he felt. The skin is becoming very sensitive to the white and clear patches. And he persons, he works in the construction area. So he works in the construction area outside of the, all the time in the hot weather of Florida. And my sensor tends to fall off once or twice a day. So those are a few comments that we came out. One more, which is here. Everson still does not have an individual or practice to implant the CGM. I think this is the one after the 
uh, the problem that we discussed with regards to the insurance, I think this is the second issue that might be affecting considerably. So I think from uh, the product point of view, as inventors, as developers, they've made a very good technology and they have something very good in the market. Now they need to work on the logistics of how they can roll out more smoothly and make the consumers more acceptable to their product, especially fighting the competition that they already have. But this is a very grow growing stage and the company is right in the nation stage. They're just trying to build but that's something which is interesting to look into from the business point of view. The Everson still does not have an individual or practice to implant the CGM in the Washington DC metro area. This is absurd. So this is one thing where they're, they're probably not gonna, not having too many people who are ready to help or ready to install the sensor for their patients. I'm on my fourth Everson system. So that means the person has been working or uh, working with it for at least for about you know, close to a year sensor right now which is ending soon and will be getting my fifth one shortly so he definitely loves it and going through it so ever since it's the first cgm i've had where i get full use of the prescribed time and no my sensor are not burning out every out early due to the high blood glucose levels my biggest con however initially was the calibration requirements but i have adopted to it well and i just charged the transmitter every morning when in the shower this was out on february 2020 a few other cons the sensor data was often significantly inaccurate the support group had no clue what was going on i think this is something which they might want to work on but but again this is only from one person we don't know the whole st whole story behind it in pre-purchase literature there was no mention that it needed to be recalibrated twice daily if you let the transmitter discharge completely you must redo the entire 24-hour warm-up or fork calibration procedure this person is talking about how it's been he's been using for the past three months and it is great but before you jump on board though make sure they have contracts and trained physicians to do the insertions this is something which is also aligning with the other person who spoke about where the practice is only in the washington dc metro area so uh, that's the only issue they, they are headquartered just outside washington dc and they do not have anyone in place to complete the procedure more doctors this person is talking about more doctor offices need to come on board with ever since i think this is where it will help ever since a lot where if we see more doctors and physicians who are going to be adopting this and helping out and recommending this for their patients insurance carrier did not include ever since in their list of approved cgm it literally took 15 minutes to insert but seems to be very happy about it i was having a hard time with calibration and keeping a schedule for charging so i ended up calibrating more often which is the whole reason i decided to switch ever since not to poke a finger so this is where they're talking about the good aspects and yes you can see some cons as well it's good to see from the consumer level point of view so you can understand how good and how how the product is being adopted and being used in the long run yeah so just want to share this with you found it very interesting with that take care stay safe bye bye